In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce the idea of monopoly theory. I'm going to show you how all these curves are derived. I'm also going to show you how to calculate the profit, revenue, and cost for a monopoly. And finally, I'm going to show you what happens to consumer surplus and price and quantity when you compare a monopoly with perfect competition. Simply put, the demand curve for a monopoly looks a lot like the market demand curve because they are the market and they control the market and they set prices and quantities. So at this price and this quantity, I can calculate revenue for the monopoly and that's that point right there. So I take total revenue is equal to price times quantity or P times Q. The first thing I'm going to do is build the total revenue curve. So I'll bring down the quantity straight down and on the vertical axis I'll plot total revenue. So at this particular level of quantity, this is at this level of quantity, that is my total revenue. Right there. I'm going to do this at several different price points and quantity points. At high prices, the monopoly doesn't sell very much and they don't get a lot of revenue. At a more moderate price, they sell quite a bit more. And this is their revenue level right there. And at lower prices, they sell more, but they actually make a little bit less money, a little less revenue. And that would be the point right there. So this is what the total revenue curve looks like. Kind of goes up and then back down. Average revenue is worth mentioning as well. And the way I calculate average revenue for a monopoly is I take total revenue divided by quantity, that's average revenue, which is price times quantity divided by quantity. So those two quantities cancel out. So it turns out that average revenue is always equal to price. So whatever my price is, that's my average revenue, regardless where I'm at on the demand curve. It turns out the demand curve and the average revenue curve are exactly the same because demand, in this case, is equal to average revenue. Marginal revenue is always a little tricky. I'm going to do that one now. And marginal revenue is the change in total revenue due to a change in quantity. And change, I'll use a little delta sign, the Greek letter for delta. My first level of quantity is right there, and my associated total revenue is right there, and I'll plot that across. So I have TR1. If the monopoly increases quantity to level Q2, right there, total revenues rise to right there, total revenue 2. What I'm actually going to show you is the slope. If you remember, the slope is rise over the run right there. So I'm going to take the rise divided by the run, which is the slope. That's the same thing as rate of change, by the way. So I take total revenue 2 for my second quantity minus my first total revenue, total revenue 1, divided by the second level of quantity, or Q2, minus Q1, the first level of quantity. And this is equal to a change in total revenue divided by a change in quantity. Again, change is that little delta sign Greek sign for delta. 
and this is equal to marginal revenue. It turns out that marginal revenue is this the slope of the total revenue curve, and that's that green line there. And the slope's not constant, and it changes all the way through the total revenue curve. This point's a very important point, because there the slope is zero, and so is marginal revenue. It's zero at that point. And if I take the point up there and I draw my line straight down like that, that's my marginal revenue curve. To the right of the dotted line, marginal revenue is negative. The slope is negative, as you can see. So by definition, marginal revenue is equal to change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity. There is nothing special about the marginal cost and the average total cost curves for monopoly. It's calculated exactly the same as for perfect competition, so I'll draw those in. Marginal cost and the average total cost. The marginal cost curve and the marginal revenue cross is the level of quantity produced. And if I take it and I draw straight up, that gives me the price for the monopoly as well. So total revenue is equal to price times quantity. Again, if I go from the quantity up to the average total cost curve and across, this gives me my average total cost, which is the area of the red triangle. It's average total cost times quantity. That's the area. And if I take total revenue minus total cost, that's the profit, which is that black area there the area of that black rectangle, I should say. The height is P minus average total cost, or price minus average total cost. The base is quantity again. So profit is equal to quantity times price minus average total cost. And again, profit is total revenue minus total cost. So in perfect competition, the market will produce a point right there and produce a quantity which is much higher than a monopoly would produce. And their prices would be less as well. In other words, monopolies charge more and produce less. Under competition, that's consumer surplus, but under monopoly, consumer surplus shrinks. The consumer is worse off. So share the knowledge, share with your friends and your fellow students, request comments and suggestions below, and please subscribe and I will be posting additional videos to help you in your economics classes.